Un Academy. Let's crack it. Hi, I'm Gautam Ross Fulera from Dehradun. I gave CLAT in the year 2021 and secured an All India rank of 25. Currently, I study at the National Law School of India University, Bangalore. I started preparing for CLAT around the month of December through a crash course. Since I didn't have that much time at hand, I had to work harder and strategize properly. I feel that through a proper plan and the determination to stick to that plan, no matter what, CLAT can easily be cracked in a matter of months. I gave around 2-3 to three hours daily aside from the mocks initially to my preparation. But as the exam drew nearer, I studied whenever I could find time and as long as my stamina would allow. I feel that there isn't really a set rigid timetable to follow. You should just follow whatever you're comfortable with as long as you're getting the work done. And you're scoring well in mocks. Also remember not to overexert yourself, for it is not necessary. It is okay to study at late at night because some people feel more comfortable and focused. But be sure to complete the required hours of sleep in the day. Even I used to pull off all-nighters. Take ample breaks between studying and not sit down at one stretch for 4-5 to five hours. I would recommend that you all give mocks during the time period in which the actual exam would take place, that is 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Plan when you have to give mocks and make sure that you have ample time between two mocks to analyze them properly. Giving a hundred mocks without analyzing them will do you no good. I made sure I caught my mistakes while analyzing the mocks, usually giving around one to two hours or even more to analysis depending on the mock. I went over the entire mock again, going through the wrong questions as well as the correct ones. I would take off material related to general knowledge from the English and CR sections, hence making the most out of a given mock. I would attempt ample questions of whichever section or topic I found myself to be lacking and analyze even the sectional and topic tests. I particularly found the quantitative and the critical reasoning section to be difficult. So I would get at least an hour a day exclusively to these sections, practicing their questions and analyzing my mistakes. The critical reasoning section is a tough nut to crack, but with ample practice and analysis, you begin to get accustomed to it, catching all the various nuances and recognizing the peculiar methodology associated with going about that section. I would search the internet for concepts I couldn't grasp or ask my teachers and peers. You shouldn't feel shame in asking anyone to help you and try to get as much help as possible. I was a part of various telegram study groups and solving doubts of other aspirants as well as putting forth my own doubts proved to be a great benefit. It served as a great motivation system too, seeing my peers perform well, also giving me solace in times when I felt overburdened, seeing that I was not alone in this struggle and that other people were feeling the same way too. Newspapers were a great help in my prep, assisting me in all the sections, providing great material to help with GK, quality paragraphs in the editorial to help with my vocab and my reading speed. I also recommend that you make short notes for current affairs and make sure to keep them relevant and concise. Once you start this process, it naturally, naturally comes to you and doesn't feel like a burden. Notes are a great asset as they help you to revise. Also keep revising the notes you make every few days so they stay in memories. Eventually you get used to the process of retention of current affairs. Try to connect different issues and think of what all parallel questions the examiner can ask from a particular issue. Exchange current affair information with and notes with your peers which serves as a good symbiotic relationship benefiting the both of you. I made a resolve that I would not stop till I cracked this exam and gave my all to it making a lot of sacrifices along the way. I feel that once we adopt a do or die attitude, things usually get done. There were a lot of step backs along the way, but I didn't let them daze me. Some days were good and others were terrible. My mock scores used to occasionally drop very low. So it was not smooth sailing at all. But I couldn't let just one mock change my resolve and attitude. One day I was scoring about 100 and on the other I dropped down to 60s or maybe even 70s. Also remember that every mock is not the same. Some are easier whereas others test you more. 
Do not look at the scores of other people and get demotivated. Although it is important to take a glance at the percentile to know where you stand and prepare accordingly, the scores of others is not the only thing you should be looking at. Sometimes it's just not your day. Also remember not to feel superior or get too carried away with a good mock score. Just carry on with your preparation because if you slip up, your score score may drop in the next mock. Don't flaunt your scores in front of peers who haven't performed well. Instead, try to help them by giving tips and pointers. I stayed positive throughout my preparation and trusted the entire process and hard work I put in. I knew that the knowledge I was acquiring and the hours I was putting in would not go to waste. On the day of the exam, I reached the center early so as not to cause unnecessary chaos and confusion. I ate a healthy breakfast and slept well the previous day. I also didn't study the day before, only doing a very light reading of my current affair notes. For half an hour before the commencement, I meditated and tried to focus all my attention and energy onto the paper. I forgot about literally everything else and it was just me and the paper for the next two hours. I was prepared to face surprises, clad being an unpredictable sort of a paper, and I did face setbacks, such as in the GK section where the questions given were of an arbitrary nature. But I kept going, not getting stuck at questions I wasn't able to do, because time is of the essence in CLAT. You have to keep going with a constant pace and not get stuck at any particular question, letting your ego get in the way. Otherwise, the paper won't finish in the meager two hours provided to you. A good reading pace is also essential for completing the paper on time. The paper consists of huge passages, much larger than we are accustomed to read normally in short spans of time. So reading needs a lot of practice too. I recommend that you start off with reading novels in your spare time. Try to pick out parts of the passage which are not relevant as this skill too needs practice. You can save a lot of time in legal aptitude if you know the principle and its concept beforehand. That way you won't have to go through the entire law and the passage and you can just skim through it. Also, the center you are in may not always come with an air conditioner and perfect working conditions. So be prepared to give an exam in an uncomfortable position. I cancelled out all other distractions in the hall and just focused on the paper. When the results were finally announced, I was overjoyed and I finally was able to relax after all these months of toil. I did all the things I sacrificed during my months of preparation, such as playing video games and all. This exam is a brilliant opportunity and I think you can sacrifice a few months of your time to crack this, if you really want it, because once you're in your dream college, it is worth the hard work. You need not let go of everything. Just put in some few extra hours and get rid of a few unnecessary distractions for a while. To keep my sanity intact, I used to play football and go on treks with my dog. Such healthy activities will give you a boost in your preparation. I stopped going out from my house the last two or three months, but kept constant contact with my friends. You don't have to cut people off or anything. Just make them conscious that this exam means a lot to you so they won't interfere with your preparation. Lastly, CLAT isn't the only option to get set on your path to becoming a lawyer, for there are other brilliant opportunities and alternative paths for you, can, for you to take. ALIT is another paper which I had my eyes on, and MHCET as well. These other entrances have a bit different pattern from CLAT. Not a drastic change, but some extra effort has to be put in to keep these options open. As you shouldn't restrict yourself to just one entrance, but keep your options as varied as possible. CLAT being an unpredictable kind of a paper. As for now, I'm extremely content on the path that I have chosen. Having finally gotten into a national law university, I'm exploring a different phase of my life, one which I was able to do because of a few days of hard work, making it all worth it. It's not a Herculean task or something like that something that you all can do if you just believe in yourself and trust yourself and trust the hard work that you have put in thank you